So, since the two major religions of the world agreed that when people die, they either go to hell and burn or heaven to sing praises of their virgins, I decided to examine what the afterlife of African traditions looks like and here are what I find out. The Maasai The Maasai do not believe in afterlife. Once someone dies, they believe their journey has ended. They also believe their sins are transferred to their loved ones so it can affect their family's future generations. They make scavenger burial by covering the blood with ox blood or cat fat and leaving it in a bush for scavengers to eat. The disease is considered a good person if they eat them on the first night. The disease is considered a bad person if they don't eat them up by the second night. To make up for the disease being a bad person and to avoid bad luck, their family has to sacrifice animals. The Igbo Igbo traditions believe that when someone dies, they either join their ancestors above the sky and be watching what their family do or not, or reincarnate as an animal. The good people reincarnate as animals like leopard or elephant, while the bad ones reincarnate as plants. Yorubas Yorubas believe that death is not the end of life. Rather, it is a transition from one form of existence to another. They believe ignorant folks fear death because it marks the end of an existence that is known and the beginning of one that is unknown. According to Yoruba culture, the land of the dead and the world of the living is separated by a stream. Once a soul crosses the stream, there is no going back. Meanwhile, it's not everyone that dies that stays in the land of the dead. If their death is untimely, they reincarnate. Reincarnation is believed to be possible in three different forms, which are Ipadawaye, that is, ancestors rebirth. They name such children Babatunde or Yabo, Akudaya, die and reappear, that is, when someone dies, they could reappear in another place, usually distant from where they had lived. They continue to live with the same appearance and let the last, Abiku, that is, born to die. These are those that keep dying as soon as they are giving birth to. Zulu In the Zulu culture, there is a belief that death is not the end. After death, the spirit of the deceased is believed to wander about in the fields or near a grave until the Ukubuyusa ceremony is performed whereby the spirit of the dead is integrated into the world of the ancestors. This Ukubuyisa ceremony is only performed for men, and on the day, a special beast is set aside by the members of the household to be slaughtered. The animal should be large enough to satisfy the disease, because a small lean one might annoy him. After the ceremony, he is able to join his ancestors, and also become a provider for the remaining family on earth. The Egyptians see the afterlife as a continuation of one's earthly life. Death is not a final state, but a transition from the world of the living to the world of the dead. In order to ensure continued existence of the dead beyond the world, the body is preserved through mummification. The corpse is transformed into a new body, destined to rise again. The preservation of the body was essential because it was believed that the soul and individual personality of the deceased continued to live in the body after death. Without the body, the soul ceased to exist. In the afterlife, the disease has to pass a series of difficult tests aided by the instructions from the Book of the Dead, protective amulets and talismans. Final judgment takes place before Osiris the god of the dead. In the final judgment, the diseased act is weighed against the feather of truth. If the scale is balanced, Osiris permits the disease to enter the field of wheat, a paradisical world of plenty. If the art was heavy with sin, the crocodile headed monster Amit devoured the disease and his or her afterlife ends in torment and shame.